Hi everyone, Lee from ESU here, and in this video we're going to show you how to program the DCC address to an ESU decoder using a Digitrax DCS52 system. We're also going to show you how to reset an ESU decoder using CV8-8 to -8 to put the locomotive back to the factory defaults. There's been a lot of rumors that ESU decoders just don't reset, and that's not the case. So we want to show you how that all works using our system here. The process will be very similar for any other DCC system as well. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do it coming up next. All right, we have the camera turned around now and we're looking at our Digitrax DCS52 command station. We also have a Scale Trains GP30 here on the track with an ESU decoder inside. And so what we're going to do is go through kind of some of the basic programming, getting the address set up. And we all know that Everyone loves to grab their brand new locomotive from any manufacturer and get it out of the box. Of course, that's why you buy it, right? You want to get it out of the box and run it. So every locomotive that comes out of the box is going to be address 3. And so that's the first thing you're going to want to select on your Digitrax or any other brand command station. So we're going to just do a loco 3 loco and you hear the horn. So we now have control of our locomotive. You'll want to do this for every locomotive you get out of the box. First thing to do, put it on the track and put it through its paces a little bit on address 3. So just make sure that the lights work, the sound works, and you get motion. If everything is working out of the box, it just kind of proves that the decoder is working and everything is good. So uh, don't do anything else, don't do any programming or anything until you prove that it works. All right, so now, of course, we're going to change it to its cab number. In this case, the cab number is 2585. So we'll show you how to get it set up here in the Digitrack system next. Okay, so now that we've got it running and proving that it's working, we can go in and get the address changed. So what we're going to do is just hit the menu button here, and then we're going to hit the quick decoder setup, which is option number one. And this is the screen that you're going to see initially. If you've never had the locomotive on the program track before, this is what you're going to see. Now also, you'll notice that the locomotive I have here is still on the main. So I do need to move it over to the program track that I have hooked up on the back of the system to the Prog A and Prog B. So no matter what brand of, of decoder or locomotive or DCC system that you're using, you will have to read CVs on the program track. Of course, the one exception to that is the ESU cab control and the ECOS. Our own systems actually do allow you to read an ESU decoder on the main. So that's a kind of a plus for our systems. But for any other system, you'll have to move it over to the program track to be able to read. And that's what you're going to have to do initially on this system. Or otherwise, you could run into a little bit of an issue, and I can kind of show you how that works. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to just hit read. So it doesn't matter that you're on one or two or three. It doesn't matter where you're set to here. We're just going to hit the A key for read. And it's going to go through and it's going to read all the CVs involved here. And this is what you should see. Short address is going to be address three. Uh, the long address defaults to 128. CV29 is 14, and the reason it's 14 in our decoders is because we have Railcom, and so that is an added bit for Railcom. And then you're going to see all the other standard things like uh, 28 speed steps, analog mode, uh, speed tables are off, address 4 is off because it responded to address 3. And then N dot is normal direction of travel, and we want to have that off because we, we're not inverting the normal direction of travel. So. Everything we see here is good. So now what we want to do is go ahead and set the address. So the first thing we're going to do is hit 2 because we want to set a long address. And then we're going to hit data, which is the C key. And nothing appears to have happened, but now it's going to let us type in our address, 2585. Make sure you have that typed in the way you want it. And then you're going to see CV29 value is going to change because now it recognizes this address as a four digit or a long address. In our case, it's going to change to 46. Now, you, in other decoders, you might see it change to 38. Uh, but this, in this case, it's going to change to 46. So we have, again, normal direction of travel reverse is off, which is what we want. 28 speed steps is on. Analog is on. Now, you may not want analog on. For this demonstration, we're just going to leave it on. But if you wanted to turn it off, you certainly could. That will change the value of CV29. 
uh, speed tables are off, and of course now we're using address 4, so that's on, or AD4 for a long address. So that's, we're good, so now we're good. So we can actually just hit the write key and hit B here, and it's going to now write everything to the decoder, just like that. So now we can move our locomotive back over to the main, make sure it's on the track, go back to loco, and now we hit loco 2585 loco, and we now have control of it under its cab number. It's just that easy. It's the bell, we can make it run in reverse. So just like that, uh, we can set the address in a Digitrax DCS-52. Okay, so now the last thing I want to show with this video is a decoder reset. A lot of people think that our decoders are hard to reset and just doesn't work. So uh, that's just not true. Our decoders reset CV8 to 8 just like any other. So let's show you that next. Okay, so let's say now that you have set some CVs and maybe something didn't quite go the way you expected and you want to do a decoder reset. So what we're going to do is go back to our menu and we're now going to do CV programmer. We can actually leave the locomotive on the main for this and, and we're going to go to 2 for CV programmer. PO mode is ops mode on the main. Now as long as you don't have another locomotive on your track with the number 2585, you have no risk at programming any other locomotive. It's only going to program this one because you're on the main uh, or, or because you're talking to that specific address. So what we're going to do is hit one for PO mode. It's going to ask us for a CV number and we're just going to hit A just to make sure. And we're going to hit eight. We're going to hit data and we're going to hit eight. And I'm going to hit write. And that, that was pretty fast that it wrote that. What you want to do then is just give a quick tip off the rails to give it to reset. And this one has a power pack inside, so we want to make sure that it drains. And we're going to then put it back down. We're now going to go back to loco by hitting C. Actually, we can just go back to loco, I believe. No, we have to hit done. There we go. Hit done first. And now you'll notice it no longer responds to 2585. It's going to now respond back to address three, loco, three, loco. And now we're back to address three, just like you would expect. And all the other CVs reset as well. So if you had a light that was set wrong or something else that was set wrong, that would also reset back. So that's pretty simple on how to do a decoder reset with a Dis Digitrax DCS-52 and an ESU decoder. All right, and that's going to wrap this video up. Uh, please let us know in the comments if you have any questions or send us an email at support at locsound.com and we're more than happy to help you and answer your questions regarding the ESU decoders or even running them on a Digitrack system. Everything works as you would expect and it's pretty good. So uh, no issues there. So anyway, if you have any, any questions, of course, always reach out to us. We're always happy to help. We thank you for watching and enjoy running your trains.